Well hello everybody at booktube. It's Andrea. It's been a long time since I've done a reading wrap up. Heck it's been a long time since I've actually read enough to justify a reading wrap up. Uh, but this month, February, I read, hang on a second, 22 books. So uh, most of them were ebooks on my uh, Kindle app on my phone. So what I'll do is I will um, put a copy of the cover just about here and uh, so you can see it. So I will go through them all. Now a couple of these were box sets uh, so I'm not going to go into too depth about each one. I'll just give you an overview of what the series is about and then uh, obviously I'll let you know what I think. So the first ones I read was part of a box set and I read books I think I want to say four. Is it four? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. No three through nine of a series called Barclay Street by Ron Ripley. So this tells the story of a guy named Shane who as a child moves into a haunted house with his parents. He's an only child and some of the ghosts are friendly and some of them are not so friendly. Uh, there was one particular ghost, uh, a girl who lives in the pond who is the pertaining evil of the house who leads people to their deaths. She's trying to get him and anybody else. However, as he becomes friends with some of the other ghosts, uh, children and adults alike, um, he starts learning about the mysteries of the house. Now he goes away and joins the Marines and on the day he, well, we would call it passing out in the UK, um, graduate graduates from training school. Uh, his parents are due to go but they don't turn up and they've gone missing and they've gone missing in the house. So something like 20 odd years later, uh, Shane is living in the area and he finally inherits the house. His parents have been declared dead, but his uncle and aunt have been trying to wrest control of the house from him. But he, he has decided he can have it. So he inherits the house and moves back in where he reacquaints himself with the ghosts, but he's determined to find out what happened to his mum and dad. And he does, and he finds that he not only can see ghosts, but he can defeat them in a manner of ways. So he does it with this house, and he becomes friends with various other people. And so the whole concept of the book, uh, uh, the series one to nine, is that there's this all overriding pervading evil that is trying to recruit ghosts and um, make this strength so they can bring this evil forward. There's a whole group of people, and each book tells a story of a particular location that takes him closer to finding out exactly what's going on. So, and they're not in the right order because I mixed them up when I put them down, there's Sandford Hospital, which is obviously set in a hospital, where there's a ghostly uh, nurse who kills people. The town of Griswold, I think that was book three, in which there is, well it's a, a ghost town where there is an evil man ghost killing people, he in fact he killed his own children. Kirkov Prison, which is again is a haunted prison. Uh, Lake Natak, which is an old Indian site, so they go into that, and there's a, a big lake, and lots of people get killed. Uh, people get killed in every single one, but it, the, the main thing is the story is about how he defeats the ghosts. Sometimes he can just draw on the power of the people that that ghost has killed, especially if they, those ghosts hate the person that killed them and he can kill the ghost that way. Other times he has to find their remains and salt and burn them, which is a well-known way of, of defeating ghosts. Uh, Slater Mill, again set in a, an old old mill uh, ooh, and they are really creepy. Uh, then there is Borgen Keep. Um, I think every time he's getting closer and closer to the final place which is Amherst Burial Ground and it's in these last couple of books that he finds out that this big evil that they're trying to bring forward is actually an ancestor of his. It's like a, it's a small child, a boy, it was a boy wasn't it? Yeah. And it is actually a relative of Shane which explains why he has the powers he has. And all through these books he's getting more and more damage, he loses friends, he loses his girlfriend who becomes a ghost and goes mad. It's really, really creepy, but it's very good. It's very well written and I really enjoyed that. So that was the first um, set of books. The first seven books I read in February were the, the conclusion of the, the Barclay Street story and I really enjoyed it and I'd love to read it again. And Ron Ripley, fantastic. I can't wait to read more and I will be getting more of his books soon. I then read another horror, there's a lot of horror, I was in a really horror move, mood in uh, February, uh, called Ghostland. This was by Duncan Ralston. This one actually tells the story of 
a boy and a girl who are friends and they play video games together and they talk over their headsets and all that um but the the lad is the guy he's also a major horror fan and he's a big fan of this particular author who allegedly died um in a fire at the house that he lived in and then one day they're playing on their video games blah 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 when the house the horror writer died in is moved through the town the kid lives in and as he looks out of it he can see this horror writer standing in the doorway and he says he has a heart attack and almost dies but he does die and they bring him back and he has several operations for his heart over the years now the reason the house has been moved is they have purchased his estate have purchased a big block of land in this kid's town and they're going to build a ghost theme park yes right a ghost theme park um with haunted buildings such as this guy's house um a haunted prison a haunted tube a haunted uh, asylum and so on and the ghosts which are real they are real ghosts ghosts have been proved real at this point are contained within some sort of containment field and they are allowed to wander but they are supposed to not harm you however things go wrong and the ghosts get out and it's all this author's plan um so the kids have to try and get out of the bill out of the place uh, without dying at the hands of the ghost most people die in this book <laughs> they do actually get out at the end i mean there's so much going on that it's obvious because it's a trilogy so they gotta gotta at least escape or maybe they do and they don't maybe some of them do. i'm not gonna go i'm not gonna go there um i enjoyed it but it dragged on a bit so I, it was the point i think it's really 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 just gets to the point so i did enjoy it i probably will read the other two in the series at some point but i'm in no rush to do so you know i enjoyed it but it wasn't so brilliant so the next one I bought is one of those cosy paranormal mysteries and that was called Hopeless Pocus by Rachel Rivers and it's about a girl who's uh, all her family are, 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 are witches but she doesn't know it. The usual trope and then she suddenly finds out that she's one too and that's how she comes to terms with it and, and there's a mystery and people die. Yeah I don't really remember a lot of it really. I've read, I read so much. I'm going to have to make notes this month. Then I read, of course, for Missy the Bindridge's Stephen King Readathon. I always call it Readathon. Uh, Stephen King's The Green Mile. Everybody knows this. If you've seen the film, you know what it's about. It's about a prison. And the guys are on death row. Um, Paul Edgecombe is the um, head warden on, on the Green Mile, which is what they call the stretch of, of walk between... The electric chair and their cells and um a man comes in named john coffee who is has been convicted of murdering two little girls raping and murdering these two little girls um and basically it sounds like he confessed because he said i tried to take it back but it was too late but he wasn't referring to the fact that he was good, felt bad that he did it he didn't do it he has a supernatural power in which he can help heal people including Paul, the governor of the prison's, prison's wife and uh, a little mouse which we all love. Um, but yeah I mean it's, I read the first two chapters of this and I just had to put it down because I wanted to bore my eyes out because I remember what it was like. I remember the film, I love the movie with Tom Hanks and I love the book. Um, I'm glad I read it again. I'm glad to have it for my Stephen King collection. I do enjoy Stephen King. So she's written so many books where I don't know yeah uh, so that's that one uh, the next one I read was a book called a lattes in spirit by Alan Troy this is set in Wales um, an American girl comes back to Wales her family is from Wales and again she has magic powers she doesn't know a lot about them because her mum took her away and her dad took her away from it so she didn't know anything about it she's actually part of the fae uh and she goes to work in her, her aunt rosemary's cafe in wales and there's this guy who's trying to bring the fae and human car racing into wales into this town for tourism purposes and they're not happy about it one of the racing drivers ends up uh, dead and they've got to find out who the killer is and she uses her powers along with that of her her familiar which is a cat and uh, her fae friends 
to sort it out. It was very enjoyable. It took a bit for me to get it to go in because um, um, they call it Ibrel, which they say is a, a, a British spelling or a Welsh spelling which may, of, of April, which it may well be, but I've never heard it. I've never lived in Wales most of my life. Um, if your name is Ibrel, it's April over here as well. But maybe it is, maybe years and years ago. They, they would have used that but I've never heard it it's quite a nice name though and uh, things like carriers we don't well I, I mean in North Wales they probably do and, and on the west but in South Wales it's a, you do hear it from time to time but not really more likely to hear kutch and things like that go for go and have a nice kutch <laughs> but yes it was a, it was a really nice story the next was the first in a box set which is called the witches and then it's a thing so the first one uh, is which is how to find your magic this was by rk dreaming um and again as you can tell somebody who's not 100 percent sure on their magic finds out about it and how uh, they get used to it i've got to remember i've got to make notes because i can remember some of these and i was really annoyed when i read the fourth one that they said oh check out the next one but it's not out till june but she was a really really nice story it's really cool um i might remember a bit more of it when i get to the next one but that is after the next two so the next two are the gene harlow films which is a by james l niebauer and so this is about the films that actress jean harlow made jean harlow was born in 1911 and she died in 1937 at the age of only 26 of kidney failure she made some amazing films during her short career such as uh i think of them now red dust dinner at eight bombshell wife versus secretary uh, and what's the oh, libeled lady is one of my favorites she was married three times and her was allegedly engaged to um, William Powell he was the love of her life but he didn't want to marry her because he, he said it I've been married to one bomb, blonde bombshell which was Carol Lombard and I sure isn't going to be married to another uh, which devastated her but at that point she was dying and there's nothing anyone could have done but she just sort of gave up died during the filming of her last film Saratoga which was completed with doubles so it just tells you about the films there's some backstage information and uh, about how her acting talent grew and it sort of became kind of like Marilyn and her talent was as good as the film she was in if her the films were so 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 was she if the films were brilliant she was amazing um check out dinner at eight check out bombshell check out libeled lady wife versus secretary red dust china seas is another good one i love that one too but this is a list of all the films and there's some nice pictures in it jennifer saw this book um when it arrived and she looked at the picture and she went wow who's that and i remember she's only three and every time i, I told her who it was and every time she saw a picture because there's some nice pictures on the inside as well of her on the inside she went jean <laughs> yes yeah, jean and then she'd go more jean <laughs> so she's so funny so yeah this is a nice book to add to my small jean harlow collection just a nice retrospective of her films right i've got a list as you can tell in my book okay the last physical book is it no there's two more after that oh gosh was um Oh, I've been waiting to read this one for ages and I've been trying to read it and it's one of those awkward shaped books so it's very hard to do when Je Jennifer's around. Pictures of the Abyss by Andrew Firth. He wrote Ripperland and what he does is he takes a new photograph of a place or a more recent photograph of a location and then superimposes an old photograph on top of it. So let me see if I can find this one here. So this is a companion to the Jack London book that was written, I think, in the 20s called People of the Abyss. And he went, Jack London, went round um, Whitechapel and the East End of London taking photographs of the people and the locations. Very rarely did he make a note of what locations were, sadly. But uh, Andrew Firth has tracked down as many of those as he can, photographed them in the modern day or found photographs of them in the 60s and then superimposed the other picture on the top. And that's exactly what he did with Ripperland, but those were specifically Jack the Ripper related locations like the murder sites and uh, places that like uh, the Doss houses where they, the girl, the women would have lived and 
and things like that places they frequented like the pubs so very interesting uh, two books to go together and i must get a copy of people of the abyss it's still available you can track it on ebay this is published by mango book you have to order it from them as is ripperland i do believe at the moment they're currently in the process of doing a third printing of ripperland and they're working on a second printing of this i do recommend this if you're into photography um, if you're into London, if you're into Jack the Ripper and if you're into the social history of the way people used to live and how things have changed, it's a really good book to have. It'll go on my Ripper shelf behind Ripperland, so they'll go together. Really happy with that one. Not cheap, but definitely worth the money. So we'll go back to the Witch's How. So the next three up by RKG Min is Witches, How She Saved Her Life, which is when she went undercover. And which is when life got magical so again this is the story and i can't remember her name and i do apologize for that because i had these on kindle unlimited and they've had to go back uh again this, this same character goes to various places so she goes to she's supposed to keep her magic a secret that's what it is she didn't know there was anybody else with magic she thought it was just her her mother didn't want her to um let you know let anybody know about her magic so she's been told to keep it a secret to not go on about it to not use it ever but she does and the magic that she uses is quite powerful and quite dangerous and she's never been trained to do it so in the first book her best friend who she just moved into went missing that was it see i said i'd remember so she works for a agency that works on certain supernatural style mysteries that the general police the normal police don't get involved in or if they are they're on the periphery um so in the first one her friend went missing and it's got to track her down they live in a loft which they can't tell any about because her friend's uncle will take it from them because he f um, forged the will of her grandmother so in all of these books she's finding out how to do her powers her grandmother has the powers her best friend is a witch as well which she never knew about there is a sort of um a magical school like hogwarts and that's what how she compares to it saying she wish she'd gone to it and she'd be oh so like hogwarts and stuff like that so it's quite a bit of pop culture referencing in there towards the harry potter series which is great and they are really good and in the book four she's actually attending a party at a house as a guest at what they call normal people but they have a name for it like muggles but it's not i can't remember what it is but I'll, i will and they attended a big party held by this woman and her fiance the woman wants to run away but the fiance has got this sort of glamour power that he a law that he can draw people to him and turns out to be her best friend lola's i remember her name <laughs> uncle the bad uncle so yeah there's a uh, an old death of this guy that owns the house his first wife died in mysterious circumstances and then his second wife disappears and she was planning on just running away but she ends up murdered by the same person that killed his first wife and he ends up dead too uh, but um whether or not he killed her you'll have to read the books to find out so that is the witches and it's called witch is and then how you find your magic and stuff like that and um, by rk dreaming and this is the set where i thought oh no the next book's not out till june and they tell me to go and check it out <sighs> don't you just hate that they tell you to check it out right and it's not even it's like not out until like the middle of the year we're only in like march now <sighs> yeah it annoyed me but i will be reading it when it comes out because it was really good yes so just having a set this i'll have a few notes about each book <laughs> for next month <laughs> uh, after that we go back to jack the ripper for a, a fictional story called Whitechapel rising again that was an ebook i'll put it up here that was by anthony m strong this is a good book this tells the story of obviously jack the ripper um, it starts off in 1889 and Abilene and somebody else are chasing Jack the Ripper through the streets and they know where he is, they don't know who he is but they're chasing him, they're going to catch him but they want him to get home first. So they do stuff and then uh, they, it, it just sort of ends with them entering his house and then it goes into the modern day and in the modern day this, there's this house in Mayfair that's being renovated and these guys um, are 
builders are knocking down a wall in the basement when they come across a bricked up door. So they knock that down, open the door and inside is what looks like a mummified body of a man and in the room there are uh, pictures uh, stuck to the wall of newspaper articles and reports about the Jack the Ripper killing, there's a bloody knife and so they come to the conclusion that this is Jack the Ripper. So of course the, the police come and check it out and the coroner and all that and they're taking things from the scenes and the weird thing with this guy is he's covered in gold dust and he's got his arms handcuffed behind his back but the handcuffs are solid gold so of course to move the body they have to take all this stuff off but what they don't realize is when they take off the wipe the gold off and take the, the cuffs off they actually set him free he is a kind of vampire but he doesn't suck blood in the normal way in fact he doesn't suck blood at all but he does use blood so he comes to life and he's all mummified and gross and he gets out of the building before the people who are going to have a look at his body and do all that stuff get to take it away meanwhile news has spread around the world that they found jack the ripper so this um a uh, company called cusp a secret agency sent two operatives to london to recapture this vampire type jack the ripper and that is what the story is about is how they go about catching and it was absolutely brilliant my mum has been reading all these books that i've been reading she read barclay street she's read i don't think she's read the witches when yet no um and she she might have and she's read Whitechapel Rise and she she loved it she thought it was brilliant so the fact is my mum enjoyed it as well it is absolutely fantastic I really enjoyed the whole idea the whole concept of it um the fact how he needs to keep killing to stay alive and that he does it in you know he doesn't need to do it for a long time he only needs to kill a few people and then he can live for years before he has to do it again um sort of explains why he would stop as well absolutely fantastic written i really enjoyed it i highly recommend it if you're into uh, mysteries and murder mysteries and ghosts and jack the ripper go check it out it's really good really really good i can't recommend that one enough i absolutely loved it next one is completely different but still historical um this is a book called the princes in the tower by jo josephine wilkinson and it does what it says on the tin pretty much there's more about richard iii and the backstories of the princes um but it does tackle what happened to the princes did richard iii kill them were they killed by somebody else did they escape what i like is this is it actually quotes a book by a guy named about Richard III by a guy named something something Markham. Markham is the name of one of the characters in Jodie Taylor's series Chronicles of St Mary's and in the last one although she didn't plan this in fact she was planning on killing Markham off in the first book in the last book we find out that Markham is actually Richard Duke of York the younger of the princes in the tower and that he escaped via the Thames and it was he was supposed to be sent abroad however of course he he fell overboard and he was rescued by max <laughs> yeah it's that kind of book and um, and in this book at the end she does say that perhaps richard duke of york escaped into europe which is very similar to what I, so i well, i think she's probably jody probably has read this or as being a historian would know the theory anyway so very it was very weird every time i read the name markham i kept thinking of the chronicles of st mary's it was so so funny okay uh, uh a dubious death by ashley king i have no idea i'm going to look it up okay i've just looked it up so it's book one in the imperfect psychic series so it's another one of those cozy mysteries um by ashley king so she's a uh, charlotte vale's a psychic from new york but her visions are not always accurate so i'm just reading it yeah, so what she is, is she actually works as a meteorologist. Um, they're working on this machine that will predict the weather more accurately than what we've got now. However, when she does this, she's supposed to say, yeah, it's all going to be done. She sees as a vision of a stormy sky and a 
thunderstorm and rain. So she tells him it's going to rain, which it doesn't. So she gets fired, she goes home, she finds out her boyfriend's left her, so the whole thing about being a storm on the horizon is that this is this. Then her landlord wants her to move out because he wants to renovate the property so he can sell them. So she and her cat move to another town. Now years ago her mother went missing. She has a sister who's a very famous psychic and so is her grandmother. So she's um, in a, a gas station, she's just out driving, she's in a gas station and she sees a magazine, a holiday mag travel magazine with this um, pier on it and a lake and as she looks at it she sees her mother standing on, on this pier. So she buys the magazine, finds out where it is, and decides she's going to go up there for a while, just for a break, get her head together. Um, so she goes up there, and then she she likes the town, a very small town, very nice, very holiday destination on a lake. She finds an old run-down house that nobody's bought. She wants to buy it, because she's like, mm, money. However, when her ex-boss calls her, they're gonna give her a very nice severage package, severance package, which they decided on. I can't remember why. Um, because they've been impressed. I think it's because they've been impressed with her work so far. So she decided she's gonna change her life completely. And instead of doing the meteorology, she's going to set up a bed and breakfast in this old building. So she does, she gets it done very, very quickly with the help from the people in the town. Um, and things do go wrong. There's somebody who doesn't want it there, so and nobody comes to the opening. Uh, so she opens up a little psychic booth where she tells fortune. Some people like it, some people don't. Um, somebody tries to get her shut down, and the guy that tries to get her shut down gets murdered. He ends up dead at the end of her property in the water, and she's got to solve it because she's prime suspect. So that was that one. It was good. I did enjoy it, and I will be looking out for more of the imperfect psychic mysteries. Now, what's next? Death and Doubloons by Nicole Robertson. I think it's Nicole. I can't read my writing. It's terrible, isn't it? It might be Noel. Uh, this is the story of a girl. Again, magical. I love these sort of magical paranormal. This isn't horror, though. And she runs a spiritualist gift shop with her parents. Her parents are on holiday, so she's in charge. Um, there's a mouse there, which her grandmother says is that her Uncle Howard. Don't ask. Um, and her, her friends come in. And she has never been one to believe in the psychic phenomena because she doesn't experience any of it. Her father is obsessed with it and he sends her a gift called the Spirit Seeker. So when she touches it, something really weird happens and there's a blue light and she passes out and then it doesn't happen again for anybody else. Um, that day, her friend, not a close friend, but a friend, um, has picked up these little treasure chests They're gonna because there's a history of pirates in this area and they have a little a pirate celebration every year and they're having a treasure hunt they've got these little treasure chests with little gold balloons in them and her friend picks them up takes them away tied them and her friend works in a cemetery because that's where they're going to have it because obviously you do she's a tour guide it's a very historical cemetery where the pirates buried them however her friend gets murdered and uh she was expecting to see her friend at a town meeting for the festival. She doesn't turn up. So she thinks, oh, I'm just going to go down to the cemetery, see if she's got caught up with anything, make sure she's okay. And as she's driving down there, her friend's ghost appears in the car. This is the first ghost she's ever seen. Um, and she's got to solve the mystery of who killed her friend and why and bring the killers to justice. And that was a good fun one as well. I really enjoyed that. So yeah, these cosy mysteries are great. They're, they're quick reads, which is probably why I'm reading so much, but they are great. It's, but hey, what's wrong with that when you're reading, I mean, a Stephen King, which is, well, this is a small one, but you know, even, even some of them are so huge. I've got another Stephen King here for March and it's massive. It's got three stories in it though. It's the back of the books. The final book. The Final book number 22, <laughs> I said it'd be a long one, is um, an Images of America book, Movie Studios of Culver City. Now you know me, I love my movie stuff, I love my movie books, I've got tons of them. I love these Images of America, you know I love old photographs, you've seen that from the Pictures of the Abyss pic book. These books are very expensive, they're about £17 in the UK for what they are, you see it's very thin. Um, this one was um, discounted. It was at £12, so I picked it up. And basically, it is telling us about three movie studios of Culver City. There's a little bit about other smaller studios, but there are three main ones, and then it does a little bit about the rest of them. So the three main studios are... Two were built by Thomas Ince, and one is the Hal Roach Studios, 
which is no longer in existence but the two ints studios are so the first ints studio is the one that became the mgm studios the very famous mgm studios it went through other phases before and it is now sony pictures international but at that time it was thomas ints and it then uh, became MGM and it does take you right through the beginning of Thomas Ince building it through through MGM years through Columbia having it right up to the present day the second in studio became the RKO studios then Desi Lu and so on and it takes you through the whole thing now of interest if you're a Marin fan is the RKO studio um, is the one that Marilyn could see when she was Norma Jean living in the orphanage she could look over and she could see the RKO water tower and you look at the pictures and you can see the water tower in them and you do think oh I wonder where the orphanage is compared to that so yeah I mean I don't know is there a picture of it here somewhere I'll just have a look Oops. Hal Roach Culver City Studios is what it became there's a picture of the author Mark Wanamaker just there one of the two it's by uh, julie largo sierra and mark wanamaker let's see if i can find the water tower desi lou yeah if in this picture you could just about see it it is right by my finger that would have been the water tower that marilyn norma jean would have been able to see from the orphanage windows i don't even wonder where the orphanage is compared to that and you're looking around um but yeah so that was the last book I read and I love these ones, all these old pictures and of the, of the studio, it's MGM, Battlelot, these are brilliant, this is the third one that I have now in my collection. Um, I plan on collecting as many of the movie related ones as I can and then I might branch out into other areas of interest like New York's World Fair and things like that. Um, they've got all sorts oh here's a good picture of the golden golden sign before so it came golden studios before it came metro golden mayor there you go fascinating um but also very very sad very sad because obviously although the in studios still exist in the sense that what became mgm and rko do that whole era of movie making is gone. The whole MGM backlot is gone. Um, there is a very, very good book on uh, the MGM backlot, which I might uh, review for you if you're interested in that. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to review the book on the MGM backlot, because I can do that. I've got a book on Warner Brothers. I haven't read it yet. I want to. Um, I might pull that one down and read that this month. Hmm. I hope you've enjoyed this quick but long overview of the 22 books I read in February I think I've read four already and it's only the fourth it's these cozy mysteries um, um I have I did start a book last month which I finished this month so when I read I read fast and I enjoy them and I'm loving being back I'm loving reading I've got a new lease on my reading I also want to thank Steve Donahue for that because watching his videos has made me want to read he's made me find ways around it i'm charging up my kindle i really want a kindle oasis but they're very expensive but i might save up for that i've you know i've probably got the money saved if i went through everything and but yeah tell me what you think have you got an oasis if you have tell me what you think of it is it is it worth the price it's about 230 quid for the 8 gig 260 for the 32 gig and i know that 32 gig is more for people who want audiobooks on them which i don't because i have audible on my phone just let me know and again let me know if the, if you want me to review any of my hollywood books or the mgm book if you're interested i can show you that and tell you what i think of it i do think it's very sad though anyway i've enjoyed making this video and talking about books i really miss talking about books and i will see you at the end of the month beginning of april with March's reads I don't think there'll be a haul I've only bought one book so far and I think that's probably going to be it because I'm only buying books I'm keeping I'm not buying books I'm going to be getting rid of I don't have space to keep everything so it's got to be something I'm going to read again or a genre I collected such as Hollywood or Marilyn Monroe Jack the Ripper um theatre stuff Stephen King so yeah there'll be a Stephen King book at the end of the month for next month Stephen King read thing but that's it I'm going to go and stop waffling I've got to edit this lot together now and get the pictures and put them in here. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye guys.